Hey guys, welcome back to the new video. In this video, we will learn how to implement a consumer group in Kafka. We will see a consumer group in action in this video. But before that, let's understand what is a consumer group in Kafka. So suppose we have our Kafka running. So this is our Kafka. And we know in Kafka, we create something called topics. Then we have producers and consumers. So we know producers will produce the data or events to this topic and consumers will consume the events from this topic. But what happens, a topic is actually made up of partitions. So a topic would have one or many partitions. So this is something like this. Inside the topic, we will create or we always create a set of partitions. So for example, this is partition one, this is partition two, and this is partition three. That means this topic was created with three partitions. In the simplest case, we can create a topic with a single partition, which is P0 or P1, whatever you call it. So when we have a topic with a single partition, we'll know the producer will produce or generate the events to this partition, which is P0. And similarly, the consumer will consume the events from the same partition, which is again P0. So in order to better understand, if you have to visualize, then you can visualize the topic to be a folder. Okay, so if the topic is a folder, then inside the topics, we have partitions which are actually similar to files. Okay, so when we have multiple partitions, then it is same as having multiple files within the same folder. What that means is when you have multiple files, then you can write to those multiple files in parallel, right? And similarly, multiple consumers can read from those files in parallel. But when we have a single partition, then that means it is similar to having a single file. That means when you have multiple clients writing to the same file, you know it will be slower because of, let's say, the write conflicts or the order in which the multiple clients will write to the same file. And similarly, when you have a single file and multiple consumers are reading data from the same file, it will be relatively slower. So if we follow this analogy, then we can understand that having multiple partitions for a single topic allows that topic to support a greater degree of parallelism. Because when we have a set of different partitions within the same topic, then you can see we can write more data in parallel. So that allows for high throughput. And similarly, we can see that multiple consumers can consume data from different partitions in parallel. So that overall improves the throughput of the system and improves the latency as well. Now let's understand where Kafka consumers fit into this picture. So let me clear the board. So we have the same Kafka instance up and running. And this time when we created the topic, let's say we created three partitions. So in the same topic P, we now have three partitions. Okay. And then we have the producer, which will produce the events, which will generate the events. Now, how do we decide which event will go to which partition? So this is where Kafka uses a partitioner. The role of the partitioner is to basically decide which event will go to which partition. Depending on the algorithm used, this partitioner will send the events to different partitions. So for example, if you are providing the keys, then it can use hashing. Depending on the hash of the key, the event will be distributed to let's say a certain partition. If you are not providing the keys, then it can use the round robin. In the newer versions, it may use sticky partitioning. So it depends on the partitioner. But the role of the partitioner is basically to uh, decide which event will go to which partition. Now suppose for the event E1, it will go to this partition, which is P0. So let's name the partitions P0, P1 and P2. Now, when it generates the second event, it might go to, let's say, P0. And for the third event, it may decide that this event should go to this partition. So you can see now we are writing data in parallel. So we have improved the parallelism of the system. And similarly, it will happen to the other events as well. Now, after time t, this could be the situation where we have all these events stored on the partitions. Now, let's understand the consumer part. So suppose we have a consumer application and this is running a single instance. So this is our consumer instance CI1. Now what would happen? Kafka will assign this consumer to basically all these partitions. That means this consumer will read the events from all these partitions. So as you can see, when we have a busy producer, which is generating events at a higher rate, we can see that it might slow down the consumption part because there is a single consumer who is responsible for reading events from all those partitions. So how do we improve this state? Well, in this scenario, we can use Kafka consumer groups. So let me clear the board a little bit. So when it comes to the consumer group, Kafka allows us to run multiple consumers in the same group. 
what that means is you provide a configuration which is called the group id okay and when you run a consumer you provide a certain group id now if we provide the same group id to multiple consumers and when we start those consumers what kafka will do it will find all the consumers with the same group id and it will form a consumer group of all those consumers so suppose when we ran this particular consumer we provided the group id to be a now when we run another consumer and provide the same group id a then kafka will see for the same group id there are two consumers so it will form a group of consumer and in this consumer group there are two consumers all right and similarly when we start the third consumer and provide the same group id then the same consumer group would now have three consumers okay so all of these consumers belong to the same group with id a and it forms a consumer group now what is the benefit of this consumer group the benefit of this consumer group is let's say if you have the same number of consumers in the group basically the number which is same as the number of partitions then what kafka will do it will basically allocate a certain partition to a single consumer so what that means is p0 will be assigned to this consumer p1 to this consumer that essentially means now we can read the data in parallel as well because we have dedicated consumers to read the events from those partitions so instead of a single consumer which is reading events from all the partitions we now have dedicated consumers so we are able to scale the read part as well now there is one important thing that the number must be same in order to fully utilize the power of a consumer group the number of partitions and the number of consumers must be the same what that means is let's say if you ran fourth consumer in the same group but because we only have three partitions so this consumer has nothing else to do but let's say if we have four partitions there is another partition and we have only three consumers then the same consumer can actually read from multiple partitions that is allowed so that is the role of the consumer group in kafka and with the help of consumer group we can actually scale the read part now that we understand the theory let's do a demo and see the consumer groups in action so for this demo we will have another exercise and this is exercise number two and it says the scenario is that your application needs to process messages from the transactions topic so we will create a new topic transactions now the producer will send a transaction event to the transactions topic so we will again create a custom event with name transaction as for the consumers the ask is to deploy three consumer instances in the same consumer group so we will create a consumer group and we will actually run three consumers okay in the same consumer group and those consumers will consume the events from the same topic the observation or the expectation is that we need to verify when we run the consumer group the events are distributed among the three consumers in the same consumer group so let's start with the demo the first step is to create the topic so we will create a new topic with name transactions and because we have to run three consumers in the consumer group so we will have three partitions let's do that so we will go to the docker desktop and i will run a new kafka container for this exercise and once it's up we will create the topic so i will go to the images and here we have the kafka image and i will run a new container now we'll give it a name kafka exercise 2 we need to bind the port so i'm going to use the same port and let's run the container so the container is up the next step is to create the topic and we know how to do that we covered this in the last video we go to the exec command and here we will go to the directory where all the executables are present which is opt kafka bin all right let's now create the topic so we will use kafka topics.sh create topic name of the topic we know this is going to be transactions partitions the number of partitions in this case will be three because we need to run three consumers in the consumer group bootstrap server is going to be localhost 9092 all right and it's a typo so let me correct the command and we have the required topic so let's develop the producer and consumer 
From the code perspective, there is nothing new. We covered how to develop the producer and consumer in the last video and we are using the same details, same logic, same concept. The only difference is in this case, we have a different topic and a different event. So let me give you a quick walkthrough and we will focus on the execution part when we run the program. So if you go to the pom.xml, you can see we have the same Kafka clients dependency, which is this one and Jackson data bind because we need to serialize and deserialize the custom event. So let's go to the custom event because we need to send the transaction event. So this is the custom event that we will use for this demo. And you can see in this class, we have two properties, transaction ID and amount. And because we are dealing with custom event, we need to write the serializers and deserializers. And you can see this is same as the last video. We are using object mapper. That is why we are adding the dependency of Jackson data bind. All right. And the same goes with deserializer. And let's go to the busy producer. So we know in order to write the Kafka producer, we need to pass on the relevant information, which is the bootstrap server where the Kafka is running, then the serializers for key and value. Now, because we are going to use the simple string key, we are using string serializer for the producer. For the value serializer, we are using our own custom serializer, which is transaction serializer. Then we are instantiating the Kafka producer. And once we have the Kafka producer running, the instance of Kafka producer, we are running an infinite loop. And in this infinite loop, we are what we are doing actually, we are creating a transaction event, a dynamic transaction event with the index, which is i, which we are incrementing in each uh, iteration. Let me do that. i plus plus. Okay. And then using Kafka producer, we are sending that event to transactions topic. The key you can see is the transaction ID, which is simple string. So the producer will send a lot of transaction events every 500 millisecond, which is half a second. Okay. With dynamic values of I, which we are incrementing to the transactions topic. And the key is going to be the transaction ID, which is simple string. And the value is the event itself. And if we focus on the consumer, we can see the same set of our properties, which is bootstrap server. And because this is a consumer, so we need to pass the deserializer for the key. We are going to use string deserializer for the value. We are going to use the custom deserializer because we have a custom event. And then we are instantiating the Kafka consumer subscribing to the same topic, which is transactions in this case. Okay. And then we are again running an infinite loop because this is a long running consumer pulling the topic every uh, 500 milliseconds. And once it has the record, we are simply printing the partition the key of that record and the value all right the important thing in this uh, demo in this consumer is the group id config which we did not cover in the last video so if you notice we are giving it a hard coded value the name of this group is basically transaction group a and in this case when we run the multiple instances of this class all of these instances represent different consumers but the good thing is all of them would have the same group id which means all of them would form a consumer group. Okay. So when we run this program three times, we will have three instances of the balanced consumer and all of them would have the same transaction ID. So they will form a consumer group. And in that consumer group, we will have three consumers running and all of those consumers will pull the same topic transactions. So what Kafka will do, because there are three partitions, each partition will be allocated to a certain consumer in this consumer group. Okay. So when we have three consumers running, we will be able to see from which partition each consumer is reading the data from. There is nothing new. We covered each and everything in the last video, all the code details we covered in the last video. Okay. So let's run the program and test the flow. So we will run the consumer first. Let me run the first consumer. And before I do that, let me modify the run configuration because otherwise it will not allow me to run multiple instances of this class. So we will go to the modify options in the IntelliJ and we need to allow multiple instances, which is this one. Hit apply and OK. And let's run the balanced consumer class. So we can see the first instance is up. It is not doing anything because it will pull the topic, but because we have not run the producer, so there is nothing to consume. So it will simply wait here. It is in the blocked condition. You can save. Let's run the second instance. This will now start another consumer in the same consumer group. 
and in the end we will start the third consumer because we need to run three consumers in the consumer group all right and uh, because all the consumers are up and we have the consumer group of three consumers as we wanted so in the end we will now run the producer so let's run the producer and one instance of producer is enough so the producer is also up and because it is running an infinite loop it will start producing those events it will start sending those events to kafka and kafka internally will distribute those events to different partitions so if we check the consumer now we can see there is some activity going on this particular consumer is consuming from the partition 0 the second consumer is consuming from the partition 1 and the third consumer is consuming from the partition 2 so you can see we had three partitions p0 p1 and p2 and then we have three consumers and you can see all of those partitions are actually allocated to different consumers and all these consumers are consuming those events in parallel from those partitions now suppose what would happen let's say when a consumer goes down so let's kill this consumer now that this consumer is dead if we uh, basically monitor other consumers so you can see the kafka will actually redistribute this allocation and the other consumers will now start consuming from the third partition okay basically the partition from where this consumer was reading the data from so you can see it will uh, reflect here it will start reflecting here it will take some time as we can see that the rebalancing has happened so that means the allocation has changed you can see that the second consumer which was reading from the partition 1 is now reading from the partition 2 because this particular consumer is dead now and if we check the first consumer which was reading from the partition 0 is now reading from two partitions you can see 0 and 1 so you see uh, that is the purpose of consumer group in the consumer group all the consumers can read the events from different partitions in parallel and let's say one consumer goes down in that case kafka will do the rebalancing and the partitions will be rebalanced to the available consumers so that is the power of consumer group now in this video we covered how to implement a consumer group in java i will see you in the next video thanks for watching